Hi Taurus, these are your messages for December 2020. What does Taurus need to know? For December 2020, this is a general reading for Taurus Sun, Moon Rising, and Venus signs. Really appreciate you all being here. I hope you enjoy the reading. So what are general messages for Taurus Sun, Moon Rising, Venus for December 2020? What does Taurus need to know? Messages for Taurus Sun, Moon Rising, and Venus signs. For December 2020, messages for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. I am using new cards today if you're coming back to my channel. I'm so excited. These are so beautiful. But if you're new, this won't mean anything to you. They just look like regular cards, but super nice. I'm glad to use them for your readings for December. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Messages for Taurus. Taurus need to know for December 2020. All right, guys, so let's get out your Celtic cross for you. I will qualify whatever looks confusing or needs qualification here, and then we'll get your oracles for the end, as always. Can you guys see these? Yes. So, all, like, already it's looking super... <laughs> I'm gonna say super positive. There is um, a lot of communication and healing energy going on here. Look at that, ending with the Ace of Cups. Wowza, can't really go wrong with that. Bottom of the deck energy, Four of Pentacles here, guys. So Four of Pentacles is really looking at, technically speaking, we're looking at emotional and financial security. Technically, that's great. There's not a real upset here. You seem to have your ducks in a row. Your income is matching your outcome. The bills seem to be paid here. Okay, your belly's full. But things might feel a little boring. Things might feel a little stagnant. So while there's security here, there's certainly no adventure. We're also looking at two fours. You have the four of swords over here, four of pentacles over here. I'll be darned if I have not seen this for you, both in my own readings um, and in other readings that I watch uh, online. I love other tarot readers. And fours are nice when seeking stability, when seeking adventure or problem solving or personal growth. This is incredibly taxing. This feels like, you can almost see his face here, it feels like it's clinging. <laughs> so there's a sense of everything is just right, but it doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? Like everything is tickety-boo and it looks good and it's cozy, but there's this sense of um, stagnant, being unwilling to share, being closed off, maybe even greed, maybe even a sense of insecurity, being unwilling to put a pentacle or two into the future to invest. So this is an unwillingness to invest, right? Because it's a clinging. It's also known as the miser card. I don't know if I want to call it miserly necessarily, particularly at the bottom of the deck. It's, it's a standalone right now. Um, but yeah, some major terms and themes around it is while you may feel secure, things are really boring and uninspired for sure. Now, there's probably good reason for this. So the central theme or the situation for the month for you, particularly in the first two weeks, is the Knight of Swords here, harassed or um, challenged by the Two of Cups. So this is really, and as you know, we have the Ace of Cups as your outcome, your possible outcome or advice. So, and I know, I realize what I've just done. I've taken the beginning and the end. I am looking at everything in a moment. But I do think it's important to point this out straight away. And that is, even in a soulmate or love relationship or in a connection, something like a deep, heartfelt connection, whatever that is, it doesn't have to be a love reading for you, Taurus. It can be any connection or relationship that you have. The answer to this is going to be love. And love doesn't necessarily mean being together. Now, I'm going to say that here, and I'm going to go and explore some of these, obviously, all these cards in detail. But when I see that as an outcome, when I see this inability to make a move, 
unwillingness, whatever it is here. It might even be out of your hands. This might be, you know, you'd like to move or invest in something and you just can't, like your feet and your hands are bound almost to this. So whether or not you can, there is, the bottom line is, it's not happening. So there could even be some communication here that you want to uh, share or someone wants to share with you, right? This is all interchangeable, Taurus. If this isn't your energy, it's someone that you're dealing with, right? Um, but it is around a soulmate connection. It's around a very, very deep, um, heartfelt connection. I do consider the Two of Cups to be the minor, uh, minor version of the Lovers card. Um, it sort of has that little mini angel there. And it can be, you know, this can be any relationship of any sort that you find deep and powerful, right? Um, but this guy here, this knight comes in with pretty much everything you want to hear. And this is where I'm going to ask that you be a little bit um, discerning, okay? So if this is you, I'm going to ask that you are discerning about a love message with someone else. Don't puff up your cheeks. Don't tell them more than they need to. Don't make empty promises. If this is someone coming into you and your world, your heart space here, Taurus, someone is definitely going to have all the right words. Someone is definitely going to, they know what you need to hear. They, they've sussed out your heart space. You might know them or not. Um, and maybe they know how to get through to you or not, but it's something that they've done before. It's something that they have practice in. And it's going to be very sudden. And it's going to be very sudden here. Also, I do consider the Knight of Swords to be the, the Knight, and I know it's supposed to be the Knight of Cups, but I find the Knight of Cups to be the poetic hero. The Knight of Swords is the damsel in distress hero. This guy is just like, I'm here, I'm here to win it, but also, bye, this is the ghoster. <laughs> so, um, and not in the fun way like the Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands is at least a really fun time and they're really flirty. This, this energy is a lot of like, it's very chaotic. It's very chaotic. If you're into that, if that's your cup of tea, if you like romantic chaos, then this might be your cup of tea. But again, I would just be a little wary about rushing messages coming in regarding a soulmate or a heart situation. Something has to do with sensitive situation here for you that sounds too good to be true. Um, it probably is. So be extremely discerning here. We do have the Cancer um, energy. It can be any water sign, but I do consider the Queen of Cups to be Cancer. All Queens are Cardinals. Um, so we have Cancer energy here. We also have Cancer energy over here with our Chariot. So strong water energy, I would say, but very strong Cancer energy for sure. We have Libra and Taurus or Venus. In other words, energy over here. And um, yeah, some lot of heart space energy. We have Aquarius energy here as well. So in terms of the signs, we have, you know, 11th house, which is friendships, volunteerism, hopes and wishes. We have the home. Um, we have direction. We have a lot of movement. We have, you know, external forces um, changing our environment, changing our external environment by the way that we move. Um, of course, this is fourth house, so it's family, it's mother, it, it is uh, related to the cancer um, ruled Queen of Cups over here. So this is why I'm sort of getting into this could very well be a cancer individual or just someone with a lot of water in their chart or someone who has a hold on your heart in general, just generally speaking. So here in the foundation, right? So bottom of the deck is being the unwillingness to move. But at the foundation of this situation is this cancer individual, or it's just a female. It's a heart, someone, a, a, a woman or um, a grown woman in your environment with a big heart. Someone who's technically considered sensitive, poetic, um, psychic. Um, you know, she could be a mother. We have mother energy over here bounty energy over here. Someone who <clears throat> is technically soft and reachable and sensitive and perceptive. Now, not in the same way the Queen of Swords is perceptive because she's looking for issues, right? She's looking for issues to solve because she is um, the partner queen. The Queen of Cups is looking for love and connection. So this is a very connected energy. And then here in 
<clears throat> you know, sensitive connected energy. And then crowning it with this Aquarius ruled star. Now this is healing and hope and wish fulfillment. This is a very powerful energy to have anywhere in a reading, frankly. But, you know, mirroring this Queen of Cups here, you could be dealing with someone who has Cancer and or Aquarius in the first five planets of their chart. Cancer Aquarius or, Cancer, or Aquarius Cancer individual. Or someone who brings these qualities. Someone who's very um, into the world at large. This is a world card. I know it's not the world. Um, but in terms of Aquarius energy, it's it's the friendship card, right? It's the brotherhood. It's the sisterhood. It's, it's you know, the human family, right? That's the world at large. Um, what you do impacts everyone. And this is shown here because of the way she's sort of feeding the riverways and the waterways. She can give back. She has so much objective love. Um, she's able to step back from her emotional world. So this is what could be healing for you here, guys. It's being able to look at the large picture when it comes to your heart space. This person is in their heart space. They're holding that cup of water. This star or Aquarius individual has, you know, the jugs of water and has so much emotional wealth that they can go share it. They can even spare it for people like this. So this is an incredibly healing and powerful connection incredibly healing. Um, either this relationship has a lot of healing to encounter, it's begging for healing, or it's in process of healing. And this is in the first two weeks here. Or it's on your or it's something that you want to partake in, but you're unwilling to move. So you might want to say these things, or this person might want to say these things to you. But guess what? There is there is a, a definitive unwillingness here to do that. And we see it here twice with our recent past. You could even just be arguing with yourself over this at this point here, guys. But in your recent past is the Four of Swords, which is rest, recovery, even if it's temporary. You know you have to go within. You know you have to try to see what's really going on in your own mind to understand yourself and why you're doing certain things or why you're not. And then the near future with the Five of Swords is to suggest here... Um, there is a loss. This is defeat. This is winning at all costs, which is the opposite of winning. We do have the six of swords over here, which I'm very grateful to see. So we have the four, five, and the six. There is a gorgeous progression, I might add. So while this may have been a little bit difficult in the first two weeks of the month, and there could be a small sense of defeat or um, uh, self-deprecation, you could just be putting yourself down, making yourself feel bad. You could be reminding yourself of something that feels bad uh, here as well. And you might just have been let down in the conversation argument or um, like a process of ideas. Or after a short rest, maybe you realize that, you know what, you're going to walk away from this sense of self-deprecation. This is also low self-esteem, right? The five of wands is low self-esteem. So you can see there's two guys behind him sort of walking away toward the river. Like they lost the battle of wits, let's just say with this guy. But he also might have just lost two friends. So he has the swords, so he won, right? If the game was to win the swords, he won. But I guess the question is always going to become here at what cost, okay? And maybe it's almost like you can't control yourself right now. You can't control a conversation. You don't want to really know what's involved in someone's heart or what's saying an apology or what's saying what you really want to say, even if it's to get what you want, even if it's to persuade someone to do what you want to do. You're not convinced of it or they won't be convinced of it. And this could be why you're not moving forward. Maybe you're just acutely aware of this and you won't be bothered even though you know on some level something needs to be said here. But that four, I might even qualify that four of pentacles because it's just, he's so stoic. <laughs> and um, 
stagnant and it's just, yeah, I start to feel bad for this guy after a while. So what is really going on with the bottom of the deck energy? I actually will look at that in just a moment. So in the, how you see yourself as the Empress. So this is goddess energy. I really do see this as goddess energy. Uh, it's Venus energy, right? So Taurus, your energy is here. Libra energy is here. Um, Venus is the arts. It's love. It's beauty. It's also, I consider truth, right? Beauty is truth. So this is a very, very intense card. It's a very intense connection. So we have two incredibly potent females here. We do have, I believe it's a male, driving the chariot in the Cancer Ruled Chariot Major here. But guess what? It's Cancer Ruled. It's Fourth House Ruled. Now we're dealing with more female energy. So there is probably pretty powerful, at least one powerful woman here in the environment. Um, but yeah, with the... Or someone who is a mother, someone who'd like to be a mother, someone who consider a mother, someone who consider to be above, like the epitome of mothers, or um, like incredibly sensitive, generous, sweet, kind, you know, um, open-hearted, gentle type of person here. Um, but this energy has a lot to give. So how you see yourself as someone who's just beautiful, has a lot to give, um, is very artistic, creative, bountiful. Um, able to generate whatever outcomes they want and um, not the same as the magician. The magician is just, uh, the magician can be a con man actually. Um, they do what they have to do to produce a result. The empress is um, uh, receptive as opposed to projective, right? And the empress allows it to come in. So there's a definite softness here. There's a, there's a genuine femininity here in the receptivity. Um, so, you know, how you see yourself as someone who can bring in these beautiful things. Certainly if you're a Taurus watching and this isn't your energy and it's someone around you, this is someone you want to accept. You're going to be the aggressor and, and you want this type of goddess or, or you know, um, empress type person to accept your energy, your offer, your communication here. Even though, are you even gonna do it, right? So here in how others see you is the Six of uh, Swords. Again, I do see this very positive in terms of progression, four, five, six. So you are able to have a conversation. So maybe just face a sense of defeat here or go into a discussion, you know, expecting that you don't see eye to eye instead of just pretending things are okay or pretending that a heart connection is just gonna save everything. I think getting to the nitty gritty, getting to the facts, getting down to the nuts and bolts of something here um, that even could induce a sh for a short period of time a feeling of low self-esteem or defeat you know what either they or you are gonna have to suck it up it's if it's if it's in relation or in pursuit of getting to the truth and not just saying words or not just saying something or rushing in or being chaotic um, just to get what you want out of someone or out of a situation I think it is gonna lead to this six of swords which is you can now move away from something difficult. You, th you can take what you've just learned that was difficult in a conversation or thought process or belief system and you can move away from it, right? So we have going from choppy to calm waters. I do also see the Six of Swords to be a travel card. I do want to relate it um, closely in that, um, in that instance to the card in the Hopes and Fears position, of course, the chariot. So there could very easily be a lot of movement here by the, I would say easily, the end of the third to the entire um, end of the month, last week of the month here. So maybe even moving toward a cancer individual, toward a new home. This could be travel in a car. Uh, we don't have the world here. I don't see you going overseas necessarily, but there could be travel um, or a new direction, a very, very exciting direction here, right? It's movement. So none, even if it's not physical movement, it's mental movement, it's um, clinical movement, data, communicative, that type of thing. And then with your hopes and fears, like I said, with this gorgeous uh, chariot, this is exerted energy, right? This is your, by, your, by virtue of your own efforts, you're doing something, you're accomplishing something, and you're going in your direction. Now, do you know what that is? Uh, I hope so because this is very rushing energy. This is extremely, you know, this is fast. This is like doo -doo -doo -doo, very, very gallopy energy. So 
honestly, it's really nice to see here. Something is going to be concluded here in the first couple weeks of the month. You're going to be moving in a new direction and wowzers, look at the new direction. So your advice or outcome is this Ace of Cups. Now, my dears, this is really intense. This could very well be a love reading or soulmate connection reading for you. Right at the beginning, we have the two, which is a soulmate connection. Could even be, like I said, lovers. This could be a faded relationship. And then you have the Ace of Cups. So I would say, you know what, as long as you're being led by love or leading with love, leading with your heart, um, doing something with your heart here in terms of your advice or outcome, I really feel, oh, I'm going to qualify with the other deck. Hold on. I'm going to qualify both the bottom of the deck and the outcome card here for you guys because I want to see what this is about. But why is the Four of Pentacles? Tell me more about the Four of Pentacles as the bottom of the deck. Wow. Um, so not as bad as I thought. I'm glad I qualified that. So judgment is another chance to make a new offer. I consider, believe it or not, the Knight of Pentacles to be very closely associated <laughs> with the Fool. I know that sounds absurd. Um, but all that yellow, all that hope, that sense of inner peace, that calmness, the joy, the practicality, right? Like the fool isn't necessarily practical, but they are full of hope and joy. And the Knight of Pentacles is what brings a sense of practicality to it. There's a realness to it now. And then the apprentice, building your future, building hard, working really hard. And then the judgment, so a second chance. Guys, someone, either you or someone else in your environment around this situation could just be so frigging busy at work. They could want to make this offer here or they're working so hard for another chance to give you something. They do want to make an offer or you want to make an offer to them and you just can't right now, but you want an opportunity to do that. So maybe that's what needs to be communicated here. But judgment is really a, a, a second chance. It's um, coming back to life. Maybe what needs to be communicated here is why you're not talking or... Uh, if you are too busy, maybe just make, try to make some sort of, you know, is there a, a, another time that we can revisit that, that type of thing. I do think that this is work related. I think it's work related. If it isn't, it could be health and it could just be income outcome like finances. All right, so let's get our cup. Why is the Ace of Cups in the outcome or advice? Tell me more about this Ace of Cups. The Ace of Cups for Taurus for outcome or advice. Wow. And then you have the Ace of Pentacles. Like, what the heck? Wow. And then Temperance. So Sagittarius energy here. Um... There's some philosophy needed around a decision and look at balancing act, maybe back to work. I would be aware that if this is a love reading for you, that someone's not juggling another relationship. And I would say if you don't believe them or if you need evidence, get it because something that sounds too good to be true is. Um, some of it could be making a legit offer around their heart though. Uh, or they could just be needing to juggle something for a little while. But we do have new workplace or home here with the two aces. New workplace or home, right? Something very, very positive. And Temperance is really asking for um, the ability to blend two worlds, to blend two ideas, to blend two possibilities. So the heart space and the sense of practicality. Like, <laughs> I really feel like if this person, if it's you or someone else, if this person is legit well-intentioned, this person is going to come through. And they're going to make an offer as long as they're aware that something needs to be blended here. And it can't be two people and it can't be two worlds. You have to integrate the two worlds here. Um, but that infinity symbol over here with the choppy waters in the background, just be aware that what's being offered or presented here or advised or accepted is good for both parties and you're both on the same page here so that you can go through these motions together so that you can ride sort of this chariot together but really nothing there's no um i don't see anything heavy here guys there's no heavy energy I, like i said I, you're definitely gonna have the chance and i would take it especially if a conversation needs to be had i would take the chance to come to a point where you might need to have God forbid an argument or a debate or a discussion over something that you or someone in your environment here just wants their way. 
which is fine. Um, but the bottom line about wanting someone's way, whether it's yours or someone else's, how you're going about it, right? So you can probably do that here by telling the truth. Because if you don't, it's just going to come around and bite in the butt anyway. And certainly if someone tries doing that to you, it's going to be known. Because this person is going to take a rest and think on it. They're going to think about it. And they're going to see what's practical. What's measuring up. So there is a weight here between the practical and the heart space. Maybe you guys just need to come to terms about something together about how to proceed. But we do have separation time apart from your partner is on the horizon. I would say this could be solved by the end of the month. Um, but certainly if work is involved or if work is taking up too much time or two separate commitments, um, two different jobs, uh, two different areas. Like I said, this could be land travel, water travel. Something's being juggled here. Um, and this could be your decision or theirs. But time apart, and it doesn't mean it's forever, it does mean it's mutual, so they know, wow, this got so long, sorry guys, surrender and release, you're going to surrender um, everything to love, just be practical, and then uh, eagle is spirit, so spirit definitely has their eye on you, and uh, co-creating with you, and you are creating something very, very positive and loving here for you and a possible partnership, you know, just try to stay honest, stay open, be willing to invest in something here, or at least be willing to have the conversation about investing together um, if this is something that you're working on with another person here. But lots of really glorious energy, but at least by the end of the month, it looks like you're going to have a lot more, say, assets and resources to actually share here um, and hopefully be given another chance because we have both temperance and judgment and this is being able to blend ideas or notions or beliefs or worlds. And this is a second chance. So really nice, guys. Taurus, thank you so much for sticking around for your reading. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll see you in the next video for your sign. Bye for now.